So I'm here with Jen, who works for the Pennine Trust. Thanks for joining us, Jen. Uh, Jen, what is Dry Mester all about? So Dry Mester is Greater Manchester's approach to really raising awareness about the potential harm that drinking alcohol can do in pregnancy. I've got friends who genuinely were told during pregnancy the odd glass of wine is fine. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a Friday night, you've had a stressful week, yeah. you're uncomfortable, a glass of red will be fine. So that's completely off as well now. Uh, we advise that the safest approach for, for your baby is avoiding alcohol for the full length of the pregnancy. There. And that's only just come into play now, like recently? Fairly, well, for, since about 2016. Um, but I think wow. part of the confusing thing for a lot of women is we get a lot of advice from our mum, sisters, friends, when yeah. have all had their pregnancies in the past when it's been different advice. So it's just about raising that awareness now. I and mean, I think where lines have become blurred is that people think it's, it's okay to cut down in pregnancy, which less alcohol is definitely better, but our advice is definitely that there's, if it's no alcohol, it's, it's no risk. And that's for the full term of pregnancy. Our baby keeps developing all the way through, so its body's developing physically, uh, neurologically, its brain's developing, um, mm. So, and that's uh, all the way throughout pregnancy. It's not just in the first trimester, it's not just in the third, so yeah. it's about, about avoiding alcohol throughout. So what are the consequences for a newborn baby whose mother has continued to drink throughout pregnancy? So something that a lot of people haven't heard of is something called fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. It's also known as FASD. And that can cause a range of lifelong development and, and disability issues for the baby. Um, a lot of them are hidden. So about 10% of babies who, with the condition might be born with some recognisable features. So it's more as, as children grow and develop, particularly as they get to sort of five, six years old then it might become sort of more obvious with the traits for it. So it's larger things like communication um, difficulties, not meeting milestones, um, difficulties linking cause and effect, so they don't understand consequences, which can make school life really difficult yeah. and then growing into adulthood as well. So babies born with FASD, it's a lifelong condition, isn't it? It's not just something they're born with or we cure. It is affecting them long term. Absolutely. There isn't a cure because that that damage has been done um, initially but what we, what is important to recognise is that actually with accurate diagnosis and, and the right kinds of appropriate support that can enable children and adults to then go on and, and thrive in life um, but yeah there isn't, a, there isn't a cure for it. Well I think everyone everyone knows themselves I mean I've had hangovers where I felt horrendous so I think imagine how that feels on a little a little baby if it makes you feel so bad Definitely. what it's doing to you and your body. Definitely. You know, this little thing that can't like fight for itself yet. It must be it Yeah, must be awful. That, that's a key thing. We know that the greater the alcohol consumption, the, the greater the risk, but even small amounts of alcohol can pass through the placenta into your baby's circulation. And like you said, your baby's liver's not developed. It's a mm. way of filtering those things out. And essentially alcohol is, you know, is, is, it's is a, poison, a poison. really, yeah. isn't it? I mean, one of my fears is, well, was, I'm not a big drinker anyway. I drink maybe three, four times a year. And... When I found out I was pregnant, I actually thought it was a hangover still, because I'd been out on the Saturday night and I still felt ill on the Wednesday, and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel shocking. Yeah. Turned out I was pregnant, I was very early on, but I instantly, until I'd seen my midwife and had my scan, you have this fear, even from a few drinks Absolutely. right early on, is there still a, an effect there or is it? We get lots of women who come to us with, with unplanned pregnancies and many women say the same thing, they've had a drink very early in pregnancy mm. and there's nothing that we can do to change that and we don't want people to panic about it and the important thing is, is recognising that from finding out onwards, that's the time when you can make a real big difference to, to your baby's development by completely stopping, stopping any stopping alcohol. Stopping then yeah. and there. Absolutely. There's always that one person who says, oh, you can have one, it's fine. And a split, a little moment of you goes, yeah, it is just fine, it is just one. Absolutely. And what Dry Mest is really aiming to do is raise that awareness for everyone. So it's for our mum's planning pregnancy, for somebody who's already pregnant, or even for those people who know somebody who's pregnant to really help support them as well. So like you said, you went out with your friends, everyone had mocktails. That's a yeah. really good, you've got a really good group of friends there, yeah. really supportive, and we're really encouraging that. And what our friends, family members, partners can do as well is also sign up to trimester. So, you know, they can say, I'm going to do a, a trimester without any alcohol to, to support you. A bit oh, like, good. yeah, a bit like dry January, October, things like that. Yeah. So it's a really good way of, of supporting them as well. And I think that's the key message in the fact that there is support because I know there's a lot of mums, first time mums like myself, and everything is daunting, everything's frightening. And you do sometimes tend to feel like you're always doing something wrong. And for any mums who, who are watching this who perhaps have had the odd glass of wine, 
you know, you can change, make the change now. Don't feel, I don't want mums to feel so, so guilty throughout the whole pregnancy because you can stop now knowing this. Definitely. Um, I know my next gin and tonic won't be till the end of the summer, but I'm very much looking forward to it. And again, it's, it's like, in the grand scheme of things, nine months isn't a long time, really. I no. mean, when you think of the development of your baby in that time, it really is worth it to just try and be as healthy as possible. It is, absolutely. And, and like we said, you know, these, these things that you can do, you can do different activities. It, we don't have to focus on going to the pub and having an alcoholic drink. There's lots of different things that we can do. A spa day, relaxing, yeah. mocktails, those things as well. It's actually nice to not be hungover. And is there like specific websites or anything people can go to for advice and, and help? There is. So obviously we've got Dry Meston and that website will direct people to lots of different types of support. So all the current guidance and advice, but also support for, for people who have had a drink or people who think they might have existing children who might be displaying some of the traits these different support groups um, yeah. which can be identified on that website as well so that's it you've heard what you can do to help people and help mothers expectant mothers anyone who's trying to be a mother we can all rally around and help each other if you check out the dry mester website or even just share the hashtag just getting it out there getting awareness out there you're helping lots of women and we can all hopefully grow healthy happy babies